so I'm back with another TV show review of a series called Roswell, and it debuted on the night of October 6, 1999, and it lasted to May 14th of 2002. When the show first came out, I didn't know how to pronounce it. I thought it was Rosewell, and that's only because I didn't know anything about the Roswell crash back then. I was only 13. So I didn't know about that. Maybe a lot of other 13-year-olds knew, but I didn't know. Anyway, it stars Sherry Appleby as Liz Parker, Jason Bear as Max Evans, Katherine Heigl as Isabel Evans, and Brendan Fair as Michael Guerin. I named those guys first because they are the main four characters. Max and Isabel are brother and sister, quote-unquote, and I say that because they're aliens, and Michael Guerin is an alien, but he's their friend on Earth. And then you have, like I said, Sherry Appleby, and she plays Liz Parker. I like the show. I was very interested in it as soon as I saw the trailer. It's basically about this girl named Liz, she gets shot at a diner in September of 1999, and Max Evans, who's an alien, he heals her. I thought that was very cool, but one of the things I didn't like is that after he healed her, he basically said, Hey, uh, tell the police that you spilled the bottle of ketchup on yourself. I mean, bro, I know you're only 16, but you can come up with a better lie than that. I mean, come on. What are the odds that she's going to spill a bottle of ketchup on herself and then fall on the ground and just have ketchup all over her uniform? And what are the odds that it's going to cut her uniform? And the sheriff didn't buy that lie. You know, he knew that the girl had been shot. He said, I'm telling you, the girl was shot. Yes, she was. They also have a friend named Alex Whitman, and he's played by Colin Hanks. And they have a friend named Maria DeLuca. I don't like Maria. She was very bossy, and she would always boss Michael around. Uh, Michael Guerin, the other alien. And what's really weird about the whole thing is that he's the alien and she would boss him around. Wouldn't it be the other way around? But anyway, um, Liz gets shot and Max heals her and that sort of forms their relationship. You know, it's based on the fact that he saved her life. So I thought that was cool, but the only thing that I don't like about that is you're telling me that they didn't notice each other until 1999? So in 1998, they weren't talking to each other? You know, I, I don't get that part. They emphasized 1999 so much. So what kind of friendship did they have before 1999? Before September of 1999, to be specific. I don't, I don't quite get that, but anyway, there are a few things that I liked about the show that I noticed. The first thing being that I like Liz. I always have. Ever since the show first came out, I watched a few of the episodes back when it first came out, but then I stopped watching, and then I came back for the very end of the show in 2002. Um, but anyway, I liked Liz. She seemed like a nice person. She seemed very kind-hearted. She was a bit of a geek in seasons one and two, um, especially season one. They spent a lot of time trying to see each other when Liz's father doesn't really like Max. 
the sheriff doesn't really like Max. He doesn't trust Max. But then he warms up to him as the series goes on. Another thing I like about the show is that it was based on real time. For example, the shooting took place in September of 1999. And that's not really too far away from when the show actually premiered. So I like that. And it also showed dates like it would say February 2000. And then one time it said May 27, 2000. I like the fact that they based it on real time. That was awesome. You have another alien that came into the show. Her name is Tess. And she was played by Emily DeRaven. I guess that's how you would pronounce it. Season 1 was pretty average, like I said. It basically had Max and Liz romantic. It was sort of like a soap opera. Tess came in. She seemed kind of sinister. But then they turned her into a good guy. And then they made her sinister again. So I like the fact that they hit us with a swerve. Then they had this one alien named Nisado. Who seemed like a bad guy. But then he turned out to be a good guy I guess. So that was cool. Season 2 was better. Because they really swerved us when they let Alex Whitman get killed. I really didn't see that coming. So I like the fact that they did that. And it turns out that Tess killed him. She has the power to manipulate time or something like that. I thought that was pretty cool. That they made it look like Alex killed himself. The one thing I didn't like though is that Max, Isabel... Michael and Tess were aliens, but they didn't act like aliens, and I know you're going to say, well, they wanted to blend in. Here's the definition of an alien. Belonging or relating to another person, place, or thing. Strange. So they're not of this world, and yet they acted like everyone else. They breathed. They ate, they slept, and they felt pain. Sure, they had powers, but other than that, nothing else really separated them from the rest of humanity. I get the fact that the writers wanted them to appear as normal as possible. But if the writers wanted to continue to emphasize the fact that they were not of this world, they should have created plot points and storylines that were indicative of this fact. In other words, they didn't have to do it in every episode, but they could make the aliens act like aliens. Like I said, season one was pretty average. Season two hit us with the swerve of Alex seemingly taking his own life only for us to find out that actually Tess did it. And we found this out in season 3. Were there any episodes that I liked in particular? Not really. I guess not until you get to season 3. Although I did like the episode where everyone disappeared. That was very spooky. It was sort of a Twilight Zone kind of thing. And so I liked that. That was cool. I liked the Christmas episodes that they did. You know, those were cool. But I have to talk about Season 3 before I wrap this up. In Season 3, Liz Parker, played by Sherry Appleby... Liz was a badass. I don't know if this was Sherry's idea, but Liz really turned it up. Sherry, as Liz, really turned it up. She really did. She was a badass. She stood up to her dad. 
She helped Max rob a bank, and I'm not condoning robbing a bank. I'm talking about for the sake of the TV show. So I want to emphasize that. She actually robbed a bank, and that's really weird, because in seasons one and two, Liz was a geek. So I really didn't see that coming. Next to Alex dying, Liz robbing a bank and becoming badass was the biggest swerve of them all. By the way, Max had a baby with Tess and they ended up sleeping together. Kyle and Liz wanted to make it look like they slept together to make Max jealous. And then there was a time travel episode where the future version of Max came to warn Liz about the present Max. I guess I did like that. That was pretty cool. I was a fan of the show. It's just that nothing in particular stood out with any of the seasons except for Liz turning into a badass. I really liked that. That was really cool that they added some spice to her character in Season 3. By the way, she fought Tess in Season 3 because Tess killed Alex. And she, you know, she told Tess, she was like, get up, bitch. I like that line, man. I'm telling you, Liz was badass in Season 3. And I know they got a reboot out, and I tried to watch the reboot. It's just not my thing. Of course, this series is based on the book Roswell High, in case you guys wanted to know. That book was written by Melinda Metz. Uh, like I said earlier, when the show first came out, I did watch it. You know, I watched a few episodes, and then I stopped. I came back and finished it as it was ending in 2002. And I know they were advertising the ending for this show in 2002. One of the things that they kept advertising is the fact that they all might get killed. And Max said, thank you for letting me live among you. That was such a creepy and ominous line. I really liked that line by Jason Bear. He executed it very well. I don't know how much creative control Jason Bear and Sherry Appleby had in the show and how much creative input they had, but they did a good job. Especially Shiri. She turned it up for season three. Badass. You know, she stood up to her father. She held it down for her boyfriend going to jail. All badass stuff. I really enjoyed it. It, it really picked up the pace with season two. Um, they really swerved us killing Alex. That was cool. Great show. Ladies and gentlemen, Roswell. It lasted from October 6, 1999 all the way to May 14th, 2002. And it starred Jason Bear and Sherry Appleby as Max Evans and Liz Parker. You can watch the show on Hulu if you want to see it. That's where I recently watched it. I watched a few episodes when it first came out, and then I came back for the end in May of 2002. Um, I noticed that Sherry Appleby had a role in a film called Swim Fan. That came out in 2002, and she was very quiet even in that movie. So maybe that's just the way she is naturally. Because she reminded me of Liz in Swim Fan, even in a totally different 
setting, a totally different story, she sort of acted like Liz. So maybe that's just the way she is. I don't know, but I even liked her in Swim Fan. She did a good job. So props to Sherry Appleby. Great job. You really turned it up in Season 3. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Roswell. Thank you for listening to my review of it. I approve this message.